At this point, all of the motor drivers are wired to the interface board. The x-axis step in direction, the y-axis step in direction, and the z-axis step in direction. The x-axis motor signal wires are connected to the x-axis driver. The y-axis driver signals are connected to the y-axis driver. And the z-axis driver signal wires are connected to the z-axis driver. In the previous video, I also showed you how to connect the stepper motor to the driver. But at this point, I have the motor wires connected to round connectors that extend to the motors on the machine. So there are four wires from each driver connected to each of the motor wires here. Each of these cables contain four conductors or four wires. I'm going to press the arrow keys to move the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis using the page down and page up. When I do that, the motors on the machine should move. So this is the x-axis. You're looking at the shaft that is extended from the x-axis motor. The y-axis motor. And the z-axis motor. None of the motors have been tuned yet, but when they're tuned, they'll be going the correct acceleration and velocity. If your motors are not working, make sure that your motor outputs are enabled. So you want to make sure that you're enabling the motor outputs that you want to use. This information is ignored by the Pokies plugin, so you don't have to worry about the state of these parameters. Now we know the motors work, we can go ahead and go into the motor tuning. To go into motor tuning, click on Config, Motor Tuning, and you'll have a dialog box that presents you with the X, Y, and Z parameters for velocity, acceleration, and steps per unit. In this demonstration, I'll be using steps per inches. So let's determine a starting point for steps per inches. This number will change when calibration is done. To determine the steps per inch, we need to determine the steps for one full revolution and how many inches it's going to move at that full rotation. So the stepper motors that I'm using have 200 steps, and these are natural steps. The driver will allow the steps to be multiplied by micro steps. So the actual steps will be 200 steps times micro stepping. This is how many sub steps within each step of the motor. And then we divide all that by how many inches it will travel for one full rotation. So on lead screws, it's going to be different from rack and pinion and roller chain. So let's go through an example where we're using a lead screw. So a lead screw, it will travel point in our lead screw. It's, it's actually a one half inch lead screw, 10 TPI. This is the threads per inch and there's five starts which is effectively 5 divided by 10, which is equals 1 half inches of movement. This specification, the, the diameter of the elite screw is not important, but this 1 half is. So we'll use this in our computation because this is actually the, the travel it will have at full one full rotation. So we'll make that one, 1 half of an inch. In this example where I'm using elite screw, I generally go with quarter micro stepping. So let's see what that would equal. 200 steps times four micro steps per step divided by one half is equal to 800 divided by one half, which is equal to 1600 steps per inch. For rack and pinion and other types of mechanics like roller chain, I generally use a 16 micro stepping on our sprockets for my uh, for roller chain. So this would be 200 times 16 and in this case I need to know the pitch and the number of teeth because that will be one full rotation of the motor in this particular case. So this would be equal to 3200 and the pitch of our sprockets is is a quarter inch 0.25 and I multiply that by the number of teeth which is 14 for my sprocket which equals 3,200 3, divided by 3.5 inches, which equals 914.286 steps per inch. Now that we have determined the steps per inch for each of the axes, let's go ahead and put them in. 914, 914 for the Y, make sure you save axis settings when you change them. And for the Z axis, 1600, save axis settings. When I'm trying to, to determine the velocity and acceleration, I generally start with velocity first. I'll put the acceleration really low 
so I can ramp up to a very high number in velocity and determine where the motor is stalling. So let's say I put this up to 3000 inches per minute and then I save axis settings. You can see that it only goes up to 1641 because of the available frequency for each axis. So I'm going to keep it at 1641. I'll ramp it up at 10 inches per second per second and then I'll ramp up until I see on the digital readout the feed rate right here. I'll see what number it gets to and then I can take that number and divide it by 2. So let's say that the highest number it gets up to is 1400. I would put 700 in this location. And then on the acceleration, I'll put this up to a very high number, like maybe 200. I'll save the settings and I'll try to move it. And I will keep lowering this number until the motor stops stalling. You can do the reverse. You can go from a low number to a high number and then take that number once you determine where it stalls and where it doesn't stall at that threshold you can divide that number by two and then you'll have a good safety factor for the rapids if you start to see the motor stalling during cutting you'll probably want to decrease your acceleration even further do that for all of the axes